Something that I like to do as a part of a daily business practice and just personal practice is to just take a moment to train my attention. Some people call it meditation. This form is not really meditation. I like attention training because I think meditation comes with a lot of connotations that it's like hard or you should do it or all of that. So attention training just involves sort of clearing your laps, uncrossing your hands and legs, and just stopping whatever you're doing. And then if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. And we're just going to take about 30 seconds. So if you can clear your laps and just kind of get centered here, if you feel comfortable, just close your eyes and just start to notice your breath. Just notice, are you breathing into your <laughs> Or is it just long and deep and sort of centered in your belly? And you'll notice over the 30 seconds that there will be thoughts that come up that do. That's what our minds do. Just notice them and go, go back to focusing on your breath. Just leave everything you did before this and everything you think you're going to do after this where it is. And okay. You take a deep breath. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. All right. So I notice a big difference in the room, but I'm wondering if any of you guys notice. If there's anything you want to share about what just happened. I feel it's more peaceful. More peaceful? Okay. Yes. Yes? Everybody's quiet. Quiet, yes. And we're ready to hear you. Ready. You're ready to hear me. Okay, cool. What else? Get to sleep. You're ready to go to sleep? <laughs> Get back in <into> bed. <laughs> and when you actually do practice that, even if it's a minute a day, you're really practicing your brain to have whatever you want. So you want a fabulous career in cosmetology. You know that whenever you commit to something in life, usually everything but that is what shows up to see if you're really committed. You're going to have a lot of things in your life. Like we have, I don't know how many inboxes. We have a mailbox, and probably several email boxes, Facebook, Twitter. Our inboxes are multiplying and they're never going to be empty. It's an illusion to think you're going to get it all done anyway. So when you practice training your mind, then you can focus on whatever you want and you can shut out everything you don't want. A really powerful tool that I advise anybody who's, well, human or going into business to use. <laughs> That's what attention training is. I am here to talk about business. You guys are all going into business one way or another. As she said, my name is Carrie and my company is Be Well 360. We are here to help health and wellness entrepreneurs grow their businesses. People here have already had their own business at some point in their lives. Okay, cool. And how many people here are considering going into business for yourself? versus working for someone else. Really the, the tips and tools that I'll give you today will they'll be geared primarily for people that want to have their own business but we're also going to touch on a little bit what employers are looking for if you decide that you'd rather have someone else take care of all the sales and marketing and you just want to show up for work and do a good job. What happens before you can sell or market yourself? What do you need, what do you need before that? Your understanding of what you're selling and marketing. Exactly. And then before that you really need your own strong mental foundation and decision that this is what I'm doing. So that's why I was just kind of curious to see, you know, who is very clear about this is what I'm doing and wants to, you know, to stand in that. Because without that stand, then you, you kind of just start maybe going, oh, that looks interesting, and that looks interesting, and that looks interesting. And I know from personal experience, because I grew my own spa business starting about 12 years ago. About 14 years ago, I was in your seat in massage school and then in yoga teacher training school, and then went into the business aspect. But when I first got started, I didn't really understand about picking one thing and going after it and being very clear about who I am and what I'm up to. And so for a lot of years, you know, I would try lots of different things and different avenues to develop my business, but I found that it was focusing on one or two things and being very clear about that's what I'm doing. Um, really, at that point, my business started to propel into something that is recognizable and is powerful. Some of the things that we teach at Be Well 360 is really how to set yourself in that in that mental foundation. Whether you're going to have a job for someone else or your own business, as an employer of people who do hair, makeup, nails, skin care, yoga, surfing lessons, massage, Pilates, all of that, an interview with me, those that are really clear about who they are and have something about their work that's more than like, I do hair, I do makeup, you know, like <laughs> where it actually has a deeper meaning for them. Do you guys have any ideas? Anybody want? Yeah, uh, some sort of passion. You know, like you're all here for some reason. There's something in your heart that went, I want to do that. 
So I recommend whether or not you're going to have your own business or go get a job, that you're clear on who that is and what that is and that you actually communicate that, whether it's to your employer or your business partner, because everything starts there. And the more that you're able to stand there, the more it's going to support you. Because being a business or getting a job <laughs> these days is not easy, right? If it was easy, everyone would be employed or everyone would have their own business. I commend you for going after what you're going after. And if you are starting your own business in, in these sort of trying times, I just applaud, applaud that courage and vision. After Mental Foundation, then the next step is to really decide who you're going to serve and what you're going to serve them with, right? And in some circles, that's called target market and niche. We like to keep things really simple because I don't, I don't know how long it took me to figure out what those words meant because my nature is not, you know, it wasn't sales and marketing. Like for me, sales and marketing were kind of bad words that I sort of avoided <laughs> for a long time in my business. I really got to learn that, you know, sales and marketing and your target market and niche you're really just deciding who you're serving with what. Like for you, Danielle, you're you're d wanting to serve people in rest homes. Mm -hmm. So that's a very specific who, and then you're clear on what your what is. And what is your what, just so it's clear. What I want to serve them? Here? Yeah, what is it that you do? What will you be serving your target market? Mainly hair services, but if they need manicures and pedicures, I'll do that. Okay, great. Yeah. And what are some ways that you can define what your what is? I know that you you just said maybe hair services and if they need manicure, pedicure. What would be some great ways to really be sure that what you want to offer is actually what most people need? Because you make money in this world not by, you know, you can sell widgets, but really it's because you're solving problems for people. Do you guys get that? Yeah. You know, I have a problem of I feel, you know, low today, I feel ugly, I'm going to go get my hair done. Um, I need my taxes done so you can be a CPA. So you're really solving problems for people. And um, so what are some ways that you can find out what are the problems that people have that you can solve? Surveys. Surveys, good. You get and the customers that other people have, you start to notice patterns of what people need, what they're, what they're, what they're looking for. Right, so observation, surveys, what else? Yeah, basically research. You want to find out yeah. what is it that they need because there was, uh, you know, <clears throat> you could go and say, okay, I'm going to go do cardio for these old folks. And it turns out they really just want their nails done. So really what it is that the who that you want to serve really wants and needs. Because otherwise you might be offering things that they don't even need or want. You just might think that it's the most awesome to provide them cardio and a hairdo, but they're thinking, well, I just really kind of want a manicure. So. Doing that research is really important so that you can decide. And then that being said, the purpose of deciding your who and what is primarily for your marketing. And here's why. If you were to say, I can do everyone's hair. You know, we all have different types of hair. If you said, I can, I can do extensions, I can do hair for anyone, anywhere. That's cool, except that you're going to get more of a response if you narrow down who you serve. And when I say that, I don't mean like you could only ever serve people over 75. What I mean is that that's what you're going to be marketing to the world. So that you can, around that message, establish yourself as an expert for people who are over 75. But you could still serve people under 75. Does that make sense? But you're just targeting your market to that one um, section of the society. I mean, like, what would be some value in doing that? Aside from establishing yourself as an expert. More clients. Yeah. Because all the old folks, they you do their hair and they're like, oh my god, she's amazing. They talk. <laughs> they spread. Yeah. Um, well, theoretically, you could charge more, too, if you're an expert in something. Well, there's that. Yep. Yeah, you can make more money. You can have more clients. You establish yourself as an expert. And you really get to be known within that realm for who you are and what you do. But if you try to be all things to all people, it doesn't usually work. I'm sure you've seen that in your life. Like You, you could try to be like helping everyone all the time and then what happens you get exhausted and you get deflated and then you quit but and backing that up with some research um, is a great way to sell and market your services but if you'd like to we offer a consultation session and what that is is a free 45 minutes where if you're interested in building a business and you think that you'd like my help doing it that you can actually sign yourself up and we can do a business strategy session together can anyone define what a strategic alliance is? Working to help you grow your business. Networking to help you grow your business, yeah. It's a specific form of networking, essentially. Um, and it's a, it's a kind of partnership. 
I'm sure you guys have heard of FedEx Kinkos, a little company we all, we all know of. <laughs> well, before it was FedEx Kinkos, it was FedEx and it was Kinkos. And the benefit of them working together is what? You get more done in one place. More done, one place, less staff. The a hallmark of a strategic alliance or good strategic alliances, if I'm an esthetician, um, I want to be working with people that have similar clientele but who are not in direct competition with me. Does that make sense? <laughs> so that way, you can, like, Pete FedEx had their business, Kinko's had their business. Their clients both need those services and both use those services, but they aren't in direct competition. So you're not going to be taking anything from anyone you work with. One of the things that I did in my, my other business, Be Well Incorporated, is I've created strategic alliances with hotels all over Los Angeles. And we create and operate day spas within their hotels. They want to run the hotel, I like the spa. So I do the spa within their hotel. We share the same client base and we share the profit. And that way we both get to thrive and it's with a lot less effort and with something called teamwork and community, which I'm a huge fan of. For in your own lives, can you guys just think about like maybe three people or businesses that you could partner with? With someone, then perhaps you could think about three spas or places that you want to work that you could create essentially a strategic alliance with. And I ask you to do that just because my goal is to not just leave you with a bunch of information that makes you like take an extra nap or something, but to actually give you something that um, you could take with you and after today implement if you choose. When we go to work, if we're going to go to work with say to a chain like Supercuts, we're going to get salary. Yes. But if we go to a salon, we might start off on commission and then hope to to rent our chair. Yes. So we're all going to really be business partners if we're going to be in a salon. If we're not working for a chain in a salon, we are going to be in independent contractors, we're called. Right. If we're going to do hair and makeup for the movie industry, we're independent contractors. If we're going to go to retirement homes and do their hair, we're independent contractors. So almost always we're going to end up having our own little business, our personal business. Thank you. So I think your information can help all of us. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for making that distinction. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is on my team is independent contractors, and they are... You guys, you are your own business people. So that's a great point that you're making. If you do have a station where you have to rent out your chair, how are you going to get people in your You know, there's the traditional ways of like, well, you guys tell me. How are you going to get people in your chair? Just to shout out your answers. Um, on the radio. Okay. Online. What do you mean by online? Have your own website. Okay, good. With a good search engine. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's looking for a salon, you know, you pop up and then you show your services and the prices and maybe a little video. Okay, cool. <laughs> what else? Participate in events that can advertise you. Okay. It's for everybody's sake, what kind of event? Well, for example, at my church, we have a organization called Women's Council, and if I went over there and I did like a little talk about beauty to them, mm -hmm. I could then give out my business card. Awesome. So kind of like a speaking or just networking. Okay. Offer a free day, and once they see your what you do, they will be hooked. Okay, great. Chamber of Commerce. Great. Chamber of Commerce. Have one of those little tiger men at the cross section showing, you know, where your place is, people pass. <laughs> Believe me, it works. Come in and get your main handles. <laughs> no, you know what I mean, right? Those yeah, little yeah, character yeah. people, yeah. they dance at the intersection. I, I found a couple of, I noticed a couple of restaurants that I passed for 10 years, that street never noticed it. Yeah. Once the tiger man with the little arrow showed me where the restaurant is, yeah. got me my attention. That's great. Yeah, I always beep or I always beep or wave at those people. So. <laughs> Really? You're out there spinning a sign for eight hours? You need some love. <laughs> okay, great. So what else can you guys think of? Ways that you can sell and market your services, fill your chair? I, I think a lot of people are doing um, bartering. Okay, great. Um, tell me more about that. What do you mean? Um, there are a lot of companies that are like on a website and you as a business owner, you join it and then you're you're there with a certain amount of services and that person can see that you you know they you offer uh, facials and then they do some kind of mechanical or plumbing and if you choose to exchange with them you can barter 
with okay. them if, if they, you know, you choose to do that. So that's kind of like your name on a list, but then whoever <coughs> needs your services, they can also participate. Okay, great. It's called bartering. Or something like yeah, that. okay, I like that. Another thing is if, if you're next to a nail salon and you don't offer nail services, you tell them to send their clients to you and you send your clients to them. Right. Yeah, we call that a formal referral system. Formal. And formal because it, well, I'll go into that a little bit, but um, it needs to be formal. Otherwise, it's sort of like, here, put my flyers out. Mm -hmm. Which is, you could do that. Here, put my flyers out, and I'm going to train your staff on our services, and I'm going to give you 10% of everything you sent to us, and we're going to be sending eblast through to your database. Like, yeah. it's where people go in and basically do like temporary interior design to help your home look so fabulous that people buy it like that. Mm -hmm. So people pay like the owner pays this home stager to come in and put the table at you know 42 yeah. degrees and hang the you know paintings and all that. Um, and she set up a deal with, uh, in order to be a home stager, you have to have all the couches, the mirrors, the rugs, all that, and bring it in, and that costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So what she did is went to some furniture rental stores and said that if they sent her, if they send her business, she would give them a percentage, and she would be able to use their furniture for the staging. No money out of her pocket. She gets new clients. Yeah, she has to give them a cut, but if you once you get into business for yourself, you're going to see that one you try to do it alone, you will fail. That's it. <laughs> Don't try to do it alone because life is not, you're not, we're human beings. We're meant to connect and it, there's just so much to do that to have a business, like to have all of your rockets in one direction and, and, and get something launched, it takes a lot and you're going to want people on your team even if they're, you know, furniture rental stores that just take that one burden of how am I going to fill these homes with furniture. Does that make solve problems for yourself <clears throat> by creating partnerships? Um, so, bartering and formal referral system um, allude to that. And I would also just put on here that bartering provides leverage. Um, you can offer your services in exchange for whatever it is that you need. I mean, this is the thing. You have this skill now. So, I acknowledge you for giving yourself something that you can really build anything you want with. Yes. No, they're over the phone. Yes. Yeah, over the phone. We can do Skype if you prefer the face-to-face -face thing. If you'll miss me. We're just looking at ways that you can sell and market your services, fill your chair, um, ex just share the word that this is what you're up to. Um, can you think of any other ways? Client referral. Client referrals. Okay, great. Partnering with a product company. That always helps. Okay, so that would go under uh, strategic alliances. Um, my next question to you is, what's the best place to start? Where it doesn't cost you money. That's one thing. Yeah, where it doesn't cost you money. Where else? And you think about like our conversation today. The answer is within what we've already talked about. When we teach our courses, we have a, a holistic business foundations course, and it's six months long, and we really help people to get their mental foundation set. Uh, define who their target market is and what they're going to serve them with. And then we go into sales and marketing and how do you build a clientele? Well, the first thing I would say is, what do you like to do? <laughs> do you like to go to networking events and shake hands and uh, hand out your cards? Do you like to go and speak to people that are your target market and, and share what you do with them? Um, would you prefer to send a letter to everyone you know and ask them to send you business? There's a whole, there's so many things that you can do. I always like to start with what you like to do and also what you're good at. You're probably naturally good at something <laughs> that has to do with this because really all of this is just relating to people and you guys do that. You do that when people are in your chair, you do it with your friends, your family. So look at what you like to do, look at what you're good at and then we would look at what is appropriate for your industry and for what you're up to. Um, so my, my favorite thing is strategic alliances because to me it just makes so much sense and I've built a half a million dollar a year business out of strategic alliances. Um, so, many, so many things that you can do. So just know that um, business can be very creative. You know, it's an art really. It's an art and a science. And um, you know, one of my pleasures is bringing that art and science together and really helping people to see how you can incorporate like What's in your heart with like what needs to happen in order to be successful? 
that's the piece on sales and marketing. One thing you guys should all know about as well, I'm going to pass around this flyer, you can take one. This is about our six month course, however, we do have tons of free stuff online. For example, our 90 day challenge is free and it's an online tool, you just sign up and it will send you some workbooks that you can do. They start out with mental foundation and then defining your who and your what. And you can do it with your friends, you can make a little game out of it or a contest to see who can create how many new clients in the next year making money. Go ahead and check out our website and um, you can take a look at some free tools on there or if you're interested in just jumping in and really creating a plan for yourself that is proven and strong and supported by a group of other people, then go ahead and take advantage of the Holistic Business Foundations course. I promised also to just touch on a little bit about um, if you're if you are going to get a job um, just some simple things I, I'm sure you guys already know this but I've noticed over the years when I'm interviewing people that there's a certain number of things that I look for one is being on time but on time is like not just on time like my dad always said if you're on time you're late if you're early you're on time so if there's one thing I could tell you like as a business owner as an employee as a student I just advise you to start practicing getting places early because if you show up for an interview to me and you're late, I don't really, I will not work with someone who shows up late to an interview because to me, that's the time where you're making your best approach, you know, your best presentation. So that would be tip number one. Yes? Since you mentioned time and everything, I was in a salon this weekend and it came about where this lady was like two or three hours late. Oh, for your and session? Not for me, but for the lady I'm helping or okay. assisting. So anyway, we get into this debate. It's not a debate, but I was just saying, like, you know, for me, I was just habitually late mm. all the time. And, you know, she was just, we were having a candid dialogue, and this guy squashed me really good, like, a couple of years ago, saying that you, res you don't respect my time. Right. You're very rude, and you're very, like, whatever. And he's like, you know, you are just rude. I'm grateful for him to do that to me because now I feel like time is, uh, is crucial in essence and I didn't realize how it was affecting him. Yep. But so she's habitually late and so I had told her about my experience with yes. someone who said this to me. The reason why I brought the topic up is that when you do have a client that comes two or three late and two or three hours late or whatever, how do you deal with that person in a, in a way that you kind of bring them up mm -hmm. to your standard and still not lose them as a client or yes. maybe, you know, so. Uh. That's a really great question and what I would advise is, is systems. One of the other things that we teach is how to create systems. Systems are really great so that you don't have to be the person running your business. I am a huge fan of passive income and of travel. Like Travel for me is, is a big thing. Uh, in 2010, I went to Africa for nine weeks. I could not have done that if I hadn't set up systems. So what I would recommend for that is a system. And what that would be is a very clear late and cancellation policy that's both in writing and is verbalized with every appointment. So that everyone knows that you guys are making an agreement. And when you give your word to something, I'm going to be there at 2 o'clock for your hairstyle or whatever it is that you do. All about creating teams and teamwork such that you can go and do whatever it is that you want to do when you're 62 instead of having to work every hour of every day. What I was getting at before with the system with the, the cancellation is really just to be in communication with people and let them know. I mean, even though people will call our spas and say, oh, I'm going to book an appointment for an hour, we still let them know. At this point, you're within our change or cancellation period. And even if they're like, oh, I, I, I'm going to be there, you know, like they try to cut you off because they don't want to hear it. It's like, I, I get, I'm glad you're going to be there. And just so you know, if you change or cancel after this moment, you will be charged 100%. And like, you just have to be clear that your services are valuable, your time is valuable, your word means something. Like, what if you showed up two hours late to a client's appointment? They probably get a free session. So if they're going to show up late, then there's some, there should be some pay for you. So does that make sense? And really strong business owners are very clear about what they're committed to, and their clients are very clear about what they're committed to. So you'll, you'll, you will set up your businesses, and you will draw your clients. So you have to decide how you're going to have it everybody's awareness of who you are. So people will just know that you're a person that begins and ends on time. You're always early, you expect them to be early, and you're going to give them the best of everything that they've asked for. Do you offer financial advice? Yes, actually, well, you know what? It's interesting because it's not a part of our curriculum, 
but one of my favorite things to do is to help people to get to a place where they, like in my life I've had $30,000 of credit card debt, all of my college loans were mine to pay, all of that. I now have savings, I now only use cash, so yes, I love to do that. It's not a part of our, our formal offering. But if anybody's interested in that, just personally let me know because it's really fun. For like me. loans, how to get loans and what kind of loans? Um, I don't actually advise on that. We, we, can, we advise on that within the courses. Um, individually, my goal is really just to help people to um, start to save and all that. So it's sort of like a personal hobby. <laughs> but within the classes there, we do talk a little bit about that, like how you can, again, it's the same thing, creating a strategic alliance with the SBA to get a loan and all the things that you need to do there. In holistic business, to me, it's important to include the business owner, everybody that's on your team. Like people that are on my team, I, I never say someone works for me. Because to me, that's like, I'm here, you're here. What's Who wants to be underneath someone? I don't, but I'm like a hardcore entrepreneur. But um, So it's not only just treating people as equals, but also just having, like I'm committed that people have an experience of love and respect in my business. So I'm considering them as part of the whole. I'm also considering my client's experience, my vendor's experience, my partner's experience, and then the world's experience of what it is that we're being and doing every day. So to me, Be Well 360 talks about the whole business, the whole person, and the whole planet, because we actually serve people from around the world. Yeah. You, have so this, um, you said that you have a, a six-month program and also a two-year program? Yes. Um, um, what are the differences in regard? Obviously, you get more information and more time. Right. But um, what are the additional classes and things that you go over in the two year that you don't go over in the six month program? Great question. So, the two year program is um, geared to helping people who want to have businesses where other people are doing the work either alongside them, like maybe you have your own salon and you're doing what you do and you have other people working for you, or if you just want to be a business owner and have other people run the business. So it's really about creating teams. It's got a lot of training on hiring, training, um, how to pick the right people. Like there's a whole, there's a lot of different systems that you'll learn. Hiring, training, and education is a huge part of that. How do you hire an independent contractor? How do you add one person to your team? And also the different ways that teams look. You know, there's, there are people that you pay, there are people that just help because they love you. So there's that. With the six month and the two year, there's group coaching. So when you get on the calls, you'll get to hear people's questions and challenges and celebrations. They're in the same boat as you, or maybe you're six months down the road from you. So there's that collaboration and sharing. And then one of my favorite pieces is actually accountability, where you get to say, all right, in the next two weeks in my business, I'm going to create three new clients. I'm going to do it through A, B, and C. And then you get to come back in two weeks and say, okay, what did I do? Did I get three? Did I get four? Did I get none? And why? And we look at who it is that you're being that has you be your word and have your have what you say you want come into reality or not. There's also a three-day live training that's included in the two-year program and that's where you get to write your business plan, plan your website, really define your who and what so that starting Monday after the course you can start and go. The two-year course can really be for any kind of business if you want to open a yoga studio or a wellness center or hotel day spas or a mobile spa service. It's really meant for anything in the health and wellness industry. Building a team and all the systems to have a team, it takes some time. And so the two years is really about giving you the support that you need to get you where you want to go. So, but your business is helping people establish businesses. Does it have to be in the health and wellness field? That's what I specialize in, yes. But health and wellness to me is, it could be a psychologist or an herbalist or hypnotherapist. I mean, if you're affecting the mind, body, or spirit in a way that increases health, we'll help you. <laughs> and I can help other people, but again, I narrow it down to that because that's what I've done. And that's what I know, like the back of my hand. But really helping people build businesses is fun for me. How do you deal with, like, an exiting plan for your business? Like, you know... Exit like, strategy? Yeah. Well, have one from day one is, is what I would say. Having an exit strategy is very important because if you don't know where you're going, how do you know what to do today? Are you asking me how to build one or... or um, I guess the importance of one because I know a lot of people say I want to own a business and then somewhere in there the, it just dissipates and it doesn't, you never conclude it. It becomes a job. Right. You never conclude it. So, yeah. 
there is a difference between creating a job for yourself and creating yourself as a true business owner. And that's one of the things that we coach on in our six-month program because I personally created a job for myself. I thought I was going into business, but what I did is I went in and I created something that I worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> what not to do? Um, <laughs> it was great because I really got to learn business, but it was bad because I just, you know, I had a boyfriend at the time who I was, I was like answering phone and booking clients on dates. And I would be psyched because I could be making money while sitting in the car on a date. And he was like, yeah, but we're on a date. You know? And I'd be like, yeah, but I'm with you. He's like, no, you're working. So I never got that, oh, I can actually have other people help me and actually have a Saturday night off. Um, but for me, it was a huge you know, journey of letting go of control. Because I was clear that no one could do it as better, better than I could. And it, there are fabulous people out there that don't want to have their own business that have integrity and honesty and enthusiasm and intelligence and marketing skills and sales skills that you can bring on to your team. So one of my rules is, is that I always hire people that play but what I have to work at. Because if it's like so easy for them, why wouldn't you want to give them a piece of the pie? You know, you're stimulating the economy, you're giving that person rent and food for their lives and their families. So business can be such a really a life-giving thing. But certainly to get out of that, you have to build a team. Otherwise, you're doing every hour by yourself. So basically, the thing is to make more and work less. But yes. also, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, you want to be able to travel and live your life and still be making money. That's exactly. the plan at the end of the day is to, you know, be able to live your dreams but not be working seven that, you know, days a week, 12 hours a day. Exactly. Not, you know, yeah. And as an entrepreneur, then, I just love that you get to be a resource for other people. Mm -hmm. You know? It's fabulous. It's very generous.